Hello there, Mr. Wilson here again for what is part three of going through this June 2023 GCC Further Maths Paper 1 by AQA. Now, just before we get into this video, um, I had a look on the like analytics for the, the channel and over 90% of people who watch these videos are not subscribed, which is really weird because if you're watching these videos, you're obviously interested in, you know, wanting to get better at maths. And it's just strange that you you might miss out on, on new videos and, and new content lessons and paper explanations on the, the level of maths that you are studying. So why not subscribe? Hey, why not give it a, a little tap? Anyhow, let's um, jump into this part because we've got up to question seven last time. So in this part, we're going to start with question eight. So a circle has centre 0, 0 and radius of 5. A straight line has equation 2y equals x plus 5. Work out the coordinates of the two points where the circle and the, li the straight line intersect. Do not use trial and improvement. You must show your working. A very aggressive do not use trial and improvement. So obviously we're not going to be allowed to just kind of randomly sub in points in the hope that we'll find... Um, a pair of coordinates that will work for for this. Well, first thing to note is that a circle that has centre zero zero and radius of five has the equation x squared plus y squared is equal to twenty five because the general equation is x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared, where r is the radius, if it's centred zero zero, which it is in this case. So basically, we're asked to solve when these two equations are equal to each other. So we're almost solving simultaneously, so to speak, right? Because we want to know the points of intersection. And if two um, kind of curves or equations intersect, then we basically solve for, for when, they're, when they're equal to each other, almost. So the way that we're going to do this is by what we call by substitution, right? What you do is you make the variable one of the variables the same um, and then you sub it into the other one so let me explain let's say i take this straight line right and so it's 2y is equal to x plus 5 and i want to make this not x but x squared so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take away 5 from both sides so we get 2y take away 5 is equal to x so that means if I square both sides, I get 2y take away 5 all squared is equal to x squared. Well, that's, you might say, why have I done that? Well, if you look at the equation of a circle, remember, I wanted to make, kind of sub into another one. I want to make these equations almost equal to each other in some way. Well, you might notice that there's an x squared in this straight line equation I've just made, and there's an x squared in the circle equation. So what I can do is I can sub in this 2y take away 5 all squared in place of this x squared, right? So basically, instead of writing x squared plus y squared equals 25, I can write 2y take away 5 all squared plus y squared is equal to 25. So I've subbed out the x squared for 2y take away 5 all squared because I know it's equal to x squared. I've just worked it out. It's equal to x squared. And we call this by substitution. You basically sub in a, a variable in placement of another variable. The reason why I've done this is because now I've got an equation that's just got y's in it so I can solve for y. Originally, you couldn't solve because you've got two different variables. And just like when you've got simultaneous equations, you might have a's and b's you have to basically either eliminate one of the variables or sub in in placement of a different variable. So you've just got one letter in the equation so that you can solve it. So in this case, I've swapped out the x for, for y's. So I'm going to expand these brackets. So I get 4y squared take away 20y plus 25 plus y squared is equal to 25. So that uh, is a double bracket expansion and you can use whatever method you want to do that but I know that it's 4y squared take away 20y plus 25 and some people can do it in their own heads 
Um, but if you want to use the area model or grid method or the foil method, whatever method you want to use to expand those brackets. Well, we're going to get a little bit of cancellation going on here, a little bit of tidying up because we've got a y, 4y squared here plus another y squared. So we're going to have 5y squared. Take away 20y. But then we've got a plus 25 on both sides, basically. So we can take 25 away from both sides. And we're just left with nothing, no 25 on the left. And this being equal to 0. So now we can factorise out the, we can now factorise to, to solve the equation. So we can factorise out 5y, brackets, y take away 4 is equal to 0. So what this means is something times something is equal to 0. Now the only way you can ever multiply two things and get 0 is if one of those things is equal to 0. So either this term here is equal to 0 or this expression here is equal to 0. If 5y is equal to 0, so that could be one example, well then y has got to be equal to 0, because 5 times 0 is 0. So y has to be 0. If y take away 4 is equal to 0, so the other option, then y has got to be equal to 4. So now we've worked out both of the y coordinates for our points of intersection. So in order to find the full coordinate, then, we need the x-coordinate as well, don't we? Well, we can just go back to our original uh, straight line equation. So we know that 2y is equal to x plus 5. So, again, you have two options, don't you? Either y is equal to 0 or y is equal to 4. Well, if y is equal to 0, 2 times 0 is 0, and that's equal to x plus 5. So x has got to be equal to minus 5. So that's one coordinate. Minus 5, 0 has got to be an option. Remember, make sure we get the coordinates the right way around. It'd be such a disaster to do all this wonderful mathematics and then get the coordinate the wrong way around right at the very end. So remember, it x then y. Um, and then if we, the other option is that y is equal to 4. So 2y is 8, and that's equal to x plus 5. So x has got to be equal to 3. So the other option is that the coordinate is 3, 4. And these are our two points of intersection. Now, just before I talk through an alternate method, how could we check our answer? Well, we could sub them into the circle equation to make sure that x squared plus y squared is equal to 25. Well, minus 5 squared is 25 plus 0 squared is going to be 25, isn't it? So this coordinate works. And then 3 squared is 9, plus 4 squared is 16. And that is equal to 25 as well. Because it's actually the 3, 4, 5 right angle triangle. Um, and I always love when Pythagoras' theorem comes up in unusual places, and this would be an example of that. Um, so this coordinate works as well. Now, just to talk through an alternative method then. Will I rearrange for x... And I saw I kind of squared this and swapped out x squared for y. But you could have rearranged for y and swapped out the, the y squared for an x squared, basically. So the alternative would be to rearrange this for y. So you get y is equal to a half x plus 5 over 2, because you divide by 2. And so therefore y squared is equal to a half x plus 5 over 2 all squared. And then you could have swapped out this y squared for the half x plus 5 over 2 squared. Now the reason why I didn't do that, and you might notice very quickly why I didn't do that, is because that just looks horrible and nasty and why would you ever... Why would you ever torture yourself with um, trying to expand this when you could alternatively expand this? Now, arguably, it's not necessarily any trickier. You've just got to be careful of the fractions. But, I mean, a good mathematician will, will kind of make the question easy for themselves. So if there's two different ways of doing it, then why not go for the way that is easier but still gets you the right answer? Now, if you do it this way, you'll solve for x first 
then you'll have to sub in to find y. Whereas with the original one that I did, you solved for y first, and then you had to sub in to find x. So if you swap the other one out, you basically solve for the other one first, um, is the point I'm trying to get at. But like I said, this is not necessarily more difficult as such. You've just got to be careful of the fractions when you expand the, the double brackets. Um, and then there's, you have to do a little bit of tinkering, like multiplying by 4 to get rid of the fractions. It, it, it's more work than what it needs to be, whereas you could just do it the way that I did it originally. I mean, if you had time, you could do it this way to check your answer if you were, I don't know, maybe a little bit crazy, but um, hey-ho. Right then, let's move on, because I think we've, we've talked about that, that question enough. Rearrange w is equal to y squared plus 5 over y squared take 2 to make y the subject of the formula. Well, first job, we need to multiply by the denominator, so we get w brackets y squared take away 2 is equal to y squared plus 5. Well, I'm going to expand the bracket, so I get w y squared take away 2w is equal to y squared plus 5. Now, when you have kind of two things that have the same letter you want to make the subject of the formula in, you need to make sure that everything that contains that letter is on one side of the equation and everything else is on the other side. So I'm going to add 2w to get 2w away from, from that side of the equation. So I'm going to get wy squared is equal to y squared plus 5 plus 2w. Then I'm going to take away y squared from both sides to get the y squared on, on the left hand side. So we get wy squared take away y squared is equal to 5 plus 2w. And this is a very common technique, this in GCSE Further Maths. When you've got two uh, terms that have the letter that you want to make the subject in, you factorise that thing out of a single pair of brackets. So you get y squared brackets w take away 1 is equal to 5 plus 2w. And then if you want that letter on its own, you basically divide by that whole bracket. So you get y squared is equal to 5 plus 2w all over w take 1. And we want to make y the subject, not y squared. So to make y the subject, you just square root both sides. So y is equal to the square root of 5 plus 2w all over w take away 1. So a really nice idea there. I mean, I've not really seen many that have this y squared in, so you have to square root at the end. But the technique where you have to factorise out, then divide by that whole bracket, that is a very common technique in GCSE Further Maths. And I think pretty much every paper I've explained, from what I can think of off the top of my head, has used that technique. So it is an absolute must that you, that you know that when you have two terms that have the letter that you want to make the subject of the formula, you factorise that out first and then divide by that whole bracket to get that letter on its own. And in the, this case, we have to square root as well to make y the subject. But usually, for most questions, when you've divided by that whole bracket, you've got the just the letter on its own. OK, I'm going to leave it there for this part because we spent loads of time on that that question eight and then spent very little time on question nine but question eight deserved that attention because it was a really good question um especially for a question eight in a in a paper you would expect that maybe to be a bit a little bit later later on so can't wait to see what's at the end of this paper if you haven't already definitely check out all the other videos and if you've stayed to the end i mean Congratulations to you for listening to me talk about maths for 15 minutes. But um, but yeah, I really enjoy maths and hopefully that, that comes across in, in these videos. Um, if you haven't already, look at all the other uh, videos on the channel and subscribe if you, if you haven't. Um, and all I want to say is thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a fantastic day.